Hi guys, what's up? It's me, Audra. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, I'm not sure how you got here, but certainly I'm glad you came. And if you are new here, well, you're in for a treat. All right, so I know that this is a live stream, but I didn't want to do all the filming and all of the stuff because I really wanted to quickly go through what a normal person's skincare routine is. And I'm a normal everyday average bitch. So I thought it would be cool if I just popped in randomly to do this every day so that you can see what a skincare routine looks like for like the regular people. Not not those of those who have all the all the money. Hey Emily. <laughs> but those of us who like live average everyday lives, I'm one of those people. So what I'm gonna do is a quick rundown of the products I either have used off camera or am about to use and will use and why I'm using them. So we're actually going to go ahead and get started with oh Jesus with the Clean It Zero from Vanilla & Co. This is one of my star products. I absolutely love using this. Why I use it is because it gets makeup off like a dream. You're gonna see in the updated thumbnail that I had on a shit ton of makeup. This really does a fabulous job of removing that makeup quickly and easily without stripping your skin, without stripping your face down. And if you were in some kind of rush and really couldn't go to the next step of actually getting to wash your face, you would be okay with having done this part, wipe your face down and go on about your business. So I did use this and every time I'm wearing makeup, I use this so that does increase my routine by one step, but it's not a huge deal. I'm not upset about it because I'd rather do this and have all my makeup come off than not do it and have mascara on and it takes off even the toughest mascara. So that is why I use this. The other item I used before I showed up is my go-to Hada Labo Tokyo Gentle Hydrating Cleanser. It does have hyaluronic acid in it. However, that is not why I love this. I actually really like this because it is very, very gentle to the skin, just like it says, which is not always the case with things that say gentle. There's a lot of products that say gentle and then you use it and you're like, my skin's on fire. This does not do that. Hey, Feffy. Um, this is very, very gentle on the skin. It does not destroy, it does not break down, and it doesn't strip. This is the most important thing. As a person with combination skin, I'm spitting, trending towards more oily, this is very, very helpful because there are a lot of cleansers out there, and I know it's very, very tempting for lots of us to use very harsh cleansers because we're oily and we really are tired of all of the oil but that ends up stripping your skin and it actually makes you produce more oil because you've stripped it of every last oil that it had, which again, quickly makes your skin get super crazy. Now, I am not a dermatologist. I am not an esthetician. I am simply a skincare enthusiast and I'm also someone who's been taking care of my old ass skin for a very long time because I was not allowed to wear makeup as a kid. So I had to just have as flawless a canvas as I could possibly have. So this Hada Labo is one of my most favorite favorite cleansers. It's not super expensive and it really just does the job and you can make it as emollient as you want to. If you want it to be super sudsy, you can get it super sudsy if that's your, if that is your bag. If it's not your bag, it doesn't have to be super sudsy and it takes very, very little of this to get your face clean. So now on to my third product, which I'm about to go ahead and use because it is Sunday. Sundays are mask days. My favorite mask because of the oiliness is to use the charcoal and black sugar from Freeman. This mask is my favorite because it tends to actually remove, and I'm gonna be putting it on as I speak, but it tends to actually remove a large, a freaky large amount of the sebum without stripping. And that is why I love it because it does get rid of a large amount of the oil and it gets me prepped for about two days. I don't have near as much oil production as I typically do. I think a lot of people, especially with oily skin, we are so tempted to use lots of products that are gonna completely dry our faces out. And that is like literally the worst possible thing we could do is dry out our face completely. Because what's gonna happen? You all know what's gonna happen is your face is gonna freak out being like, there's no oil. So it's gonna double the oil production. At least that's what it feels like to me to get you back into the, the rhythm of what your face wants to be at. Now, I know I don't always 
stripe the right way. But for camera purposes, it's actually really difficult to do this on camera. I don't know if you guys can appreciate that uh, because it's backwards. So um, I'm looking at it one way and then it's going on another way and I start getting all confused. I'm like, which way is which? Uh, so these are, for those of you just joining live, these are going to be very impromptu lives where I just jump in and show you my skincare routine. Uh, I think a big reason I wanted to go ahead and do this too is because I feel like there's this push towards having like these insane skincare routines where it's like 75 steps. No, I'm kidding. But like there are literally 20 step, 10 step, 15 step skincare routines you don't need to get all that crazy with it. I mean, you can, if it makes you feel better, if you like that, if it's calming, if it's relaxing, I understand. I've had times where I had a very large amount of steps for my skincare routine, but that was more to calm me down and less about the actual needing to do all of those steps. Cause a lot of the steps are repetitive. So like double washing. And also the other thing is like some of the washing steps, it's like, that that's one step really if you're if you're at the sink you wash your face once and then you go ahead and wash your face that's all one step like you're still at the sink so like don't let's not church it up um so now we're gonna get to my next products which you know what of course i didn't bring them over here so i'm gonna grab those right quick and then we will be in the money pause So sorry. All right. <laughs> so since it is Sunday and you're going to do of these steps changes. Now, the reason that it changes is not because I'm trying to do so much for my skin and I'm being like, oh, and then you do. it is because I have combination skin. One of the biggest things I have found as a person with combination skin, regardless of which direction it is trending, is that we're not doing enough to take care of all of the varying issues with our combination skin. If you have just normal skin or you just have just dry skin, a lot of times you're not running into all of the different problems that somebody with combination skin can have. So for instance, I can have spots that are dry. And if I'm not trying to take care of those dry spots, like I do this, and then those spots might be dry, I'm not taking care of those spots. So then I'm going to get uneven skin and have all these problems. So I'm having to constantly monitor all these different issues and address all of them at different times. And I will get to your questions as soon as I am done going over the last two items and then we can question answer and then I will rinse this off and be out of your hair and you guys can have a wonderful day. So the next item I would use after I rinsed all of this off my face is uh, I'm sure if you are a subscriber of Kate the Great, you've seen this. I've been using this for years now, I think. I, I've had this at least for a year. It's the Glow Recipe Pineapple Sea Bright Serum. This is a really, really good serum. What I really like about this is how it goes into the skin. It feels amazing. It's almost like a face oil, but not quite that face oil texture. Very hydrating. My skin always looks bright and youthful when I use this. And that's why I like to use it after I use this mask. I really, really like to use the, the Bright Serum after I use this mask because it just gives me back some of the moisture that I kind of took just trying to dry my face out just a little bit, not too much. But I took some of the moisture from my face when I did this particular mask. Not all masks do it, but this one is intended to do that. This is what I, why I'm using a charcoal mask because I am trying to dry out my face for the week. Not the entire week. It tends to last Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday. By Wednesday, I'm having a little bit more oil production, but you will see what I use during that time. But this is really great because what it does is after I've used this mask, my skin might feel a little bit tight, a little bit dry. And then I put this on, it's instantly plumped back up. My skin feels glorious. And I'm like, who are you? Don't talk to me. I don't know why I get so aggressive when my skin looks good, but you guys, I get, I become an aggressive bitch. When my skin looks good or I've done a good makeup look, I become violent. We're not going to talk about it. So that is my next step after this mask is off. And my final step of the evening for Sunday will actually be to put on the Giaja goat's milk, 
moisturizing day cream. Now I know it says moisturizing day cream. You can use it whenever you want. There is a night version of this, which I have not yet purchased, which I should probably do that. What am I doing? But I'm going to go ahead and get that. What I love about this, it is moisturizing without being oily. So as a person with oily ass skin, if I'm doing all of this, the last thing I want is to add a bunch of oil to my skin because I'm trying, trying to de-oil right now. I'm trying to de-escalate the sebum production. And this is really good about that. It always also leaves my skin just feeling very silky, very soft. And I don't have a lot of issues with this moisturizer at all. It is in a tub form. So you may want to get like a little spatula or just make sure you always have clean fingers when you're dipping into it. For both this and this, I use my PMD facial cleanser thing. I don't know what they call it. They call it, it'll be in the description tomorrow probably. But I do use that. It does get the products in a little bit better. And then, you know, I go to bed and I'm like, what bitch? Like I wake up, oops. I just threw it. <laughs> I wake up the next day and I'm like, look at look at my skin. I have been doing this kind of routine for a very long time. So I'm just going to tell you that for me and my combination skin, this routine has managed to not only keep my skin looking nice and healthy, but somewhat younger. Let me pick this up because I dropped it. <laughs> okay. I feel better. I couldn't leave it. I don't know. But it just, it does help my skin feel healthy and smooth and clear and clean. You guys have seen me many a time start a video with not a stitch of makeup on. And I'm telling you, if I hadn't been taking care of my skin the way I have, I really wouldn't feel comfortable doing it. I don't even feel like I have to announce that I'm not going to have anything on my face because I'm that confident in my skin. And I just want you guys to be that confident in your skin. So now let's hang out because I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to scooch in. <laughs> Feffy, it's like you look so good you can't even handle your own face. Yes. Like that is how I feel. I'm like, oh, bitch, who are you? <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Emily said, girl, your skin looks bomb. Um, Bethany, I just started playing with one. I have to be careful about using too many pro products with hy hyaluronic acid. Yes. So just a quick note about hyaluronic acid. I know there's a lot of things going around about it. This is my experience with hyaluronic acid. As somebody who has currently combination trending oily instead of just combination, it is trending more oily right now. Too many products with hyaluronic acid just oversaturates my face. <laughs> like I'm over moisturizing at that point. I just, I have too much moisturizer. Yes, you can actually have too much moisturizer. If you're ever trying to figure out if you have too much moisturizer on your face. It's very, very easy. If your skin is oversaturated and over moisturized and over hydrated, I'm telling you that what you're going to find out is every product that you try to like put on your face, it's, it's just going to sit on the surface. It will not sink into your skin because your skin can't handle anymore. It's just like when you water a plant and you're putting too much water and the water will not go down into the soil. Same thing with your face. <laughs> Your essence is the only product you use with hyaluronic acid. Okay. Feffy, your combo and sensitive and your routine is sim simple. Um, Zarabe, Clinique, Avene, and everything because you will not risk repeating the big dry beard incident of 2016. I've got to hear about the big dry beard incident. The fuck? <laughs> mm. Hey, Tracy, I just do, I'm, I'm, these are going to be pop-up lives, so there's not going to be a rhyme or reason to when they show up. But what I'm going to be doing is my nighttime skincare routine. Like, literally, I could just pop in at 2 a.m. and be like, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing it more like I'm doing a regular video, and then we'll answer questions and all that good stuff. But, yeah, I think that, and if you look at it, it was one, two, three, what, five products, really? Five products. So five things for my face. I feel like we get a, we've been getting insane and I know we all want to do skincare. We all want to take care of our skin, but literally like going to these insane lengths to where if you have 17 steps, again, if that's what you love because it's calming, do that. But in all reality, like I am a regular everyday average bitch, currently a regular everyday average unemployed bitch, but regular just the same. 
I do not need a skincare routine that is going to take my whole life. I still go out and I, well, I used to, I, I go out, I have drinks, I have a good time. I do not want to come home and then have to engage in a 17 step process. It is so awful. Any tips on feeling like my skincare doesn't totally sink in, but I feel, I still feel somewhat dehydrated, not overly moisturized. What are you using, Emily? Because sometimes there are products that just aren't for you. Like there's certain things that I've used or serums where I felt like it's doing absolutely nothing. And it's just that my skin and that product don't go. So for instance, the Juice Beauty whatever the fuck a hundred dollars and I still have it in my bathroom. I would grab it, but I don't want you guys to be, well, I'll grab it. Who cares? I'm going to grab it. So this particular product is the juice beauty stem cellular anti wrinkle bo booster serum does absolutely fuck all absolutely fuck all does nothing. I don't see, I have every time I've used it, um, okay. So niacinamide is kind of tricky. Um, that I tend to, when I'm using niacinamide, I pat it onto my skin. I also do have that weird PMD like thing for my face, my face vibrator. I tend to let that sit for about five minutes and then I will go back in and just massage it back into my skin and then the rest sinks in. That's what works for me. Eye creams, funnily enough, I just pat them on. I do not do anything to get it to go further into my skin because for my nighttime skincare routine, if I just pat the eye cream on, I know people feel one way or another about eye creams, but if I just pat it on, I just let it sink in overnight. Niacinamide, I have that as well. I tend to let that sit for about five minutes before I even apply anything else. Because one of the biggest things is not leaving that break between your serums and the application of your moisturizer. You do need anywhere from three to five minutes be between your serums before you apply your moisturizer. Usually if you don't give them that time, one, you're just spreading the serum all around so it's not as effective. That's one and two. Um, <laughs> and then you just slap the moisturizer on top. So like nothing is actually getting, for me anyway, that's what I felt like nothing was actually getting to sink in and everything just started to sit on top because the two products were kind of mixing together. And if they were not like the same brand or the same line, you know what I'm talking about? Where it's like they go together, then it just wasn't being friendly. I hope that that helps, Emily. What? How much niacinamide is in there too? Like what percentage? Because it might be your percentage as well. I had to buy the most simple skincare possible to help your skin get back on track. The and that's another thing. If you can find a skincare line that has this like three steps already for you, I always recommend try the moisture, the, the moisturizer or the cleanser. One of them both. I prefer to use the cleanser. Uh, try the cleanser first, and if you try the cleanser and you really like it, then add the other two items from there, and then you just you have your skincare routine right there. You do not have to go crazy buying a lot of products. I have a lot of products because I had a shit ton of subscription boxes, and I've slowly started whittling that down because I don't like having that much. Like That gets insane. Now, there are some products that I have for different days of the week, but there we go. Oh, good. Emily, I'm glad I could help you. <laughs> Bethany said, my ex's mom has gorgeous Pacific Islander skin. I'm a translucent, dried out Norwegian. <laughs> she talked to me about my forehead canyons regularly. I lack the melanin to avoid potato status. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> the biggest issue for a lot of Caucasian folk... <laughs> is the sun. Stay the hell out of the sun. I don't know. <laughs> ooh, that is a pretty, ooh. I don't think you need that. <laughs> I really don't, Emily. I don't think you actually need that niacinamide. Because it, it's also, niacinamide is also a moisture, like skin-like, it has skin-like ingredients inside of it, like glycerin. I like. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying this right. Because I did a whole video and now my mind's like, bleh but it has really good shit in it. 
<laughs> we'll just use those words. We'll use Audra language. Niacinamide has good shit in it and it acts like skin as well. If you have other products that act like skin and you pair them up with niacinamide, it can be kind of disastrous, which is why I'm very careful about using my instant natural niacinamide. I'm also very, very careful about, like I don't use vitamin C because they not they had one, the uh, percentage, the concentration of the vitamin C was way too high in that vitamin C. And girl, I had a sunburn. It was horrible. I had a sunburn from a serum, but luckily I had other things to handle up on it. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Cheers, Yolanda. Think, really think. I'm trying. I'm using regular YouTube Live, by the way. I didn't pop into, I didn't use the StreamYard. I'm going to use that tomorrow. I just wasn't sure if I was going to really be able to make it. And so I was like, oh, I don't want to get on there. Fuck it up. Um, <laughs> Bethany, you wear sunscreen year round. You burnt through zinc oxide in Hawaii. You're not meant to be near the equator. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing, because for me, one of the most complicated things about skincare isn't even the skincare itself. It's how many different things are out there. Yes, Emily, a vitamin C sunburn. You have to be very, very careful with it because vitamin C is volatile. <clears throat> Excuse me. Vitamin C is good, but it's volatile. And if you get it in too high of a concentration, it can give you an irritation. I basically had like a sunburn, but luckily I had Sunday Riley and that shit's expensive. So, ugh. but I had that and I was able to like handle up on that and I only had issue for a day. But yeah, skincare is one of those things where there's so much information out there and there's so many people telling you all these different products that are so great. But the problem is you have to know your skin. So like this routine that I am using is for my skin. It is for my combination oily skin. If you have oily skin or you have combination skin, these might be things that will work for you. If you have dry skin, some of these things will work for you. Some of them won't. Like for dry skin, I would not necessarily recommend doing a charcoal mask. Your skin is already dry. This is not going to be friendly for you. Like, does it say detoxifying? Yes. But if this is a drying mud mask and it helps lift away oils and toxins without over drying the skin. It says without over drying the skin, true. But if you have dry skin, I would not use a charcoal mask. That is me, that is me, skincare enthusiast. I'm just saying, if you have dry skin, I wouldn't recommend using a charcoal mask. I would use something that was gonna be more moisturizing, more hydrating. I would use masks that were going to be friendly and put oil into your skin and put hydration, not oil, but put hydration and moisture into your skin. I would not use something that's trying to take it out. <laughs> and that's like, I like to make skincare as simple as possible because I'm a simple bitch. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm never going to have all the best terminology and that's just me. I'm not going to have it, but I can tell you yay or nay on something. And again, pay attention to what these, like what everything says, because I feel like people buy stuff because they hear someone likes it and they don't read it. So this is, this is, this is a different mask. This is a purifying avocado and oatmeal mask. Again, I wouldn't recommend this for dry skin. It even says that this is perfect for normal to combination skin. So the fact that people often see somebody and they go, oh, their skin looks great. I'm going to use this product, but they don't think about their own skin Matt. They're like, Audra, I used a charcoal mask and it dried my skin the fuck out. I'm like, I know you have dry skin. Why this to me? <laughs> my mask is almost dry. Does anybody have any other questions, concerns before I sign off of this bad boy and leave it to leave it to the streets? <laughs> Because it's my birthday week and it's about to get live in this biatch. Pores questions. Okay, hold on. Yolanda. Oh, Felice, I became unemployed last week. It was rough.
I'm like going way the hell up here. I'm sorry if I missed it. Um, and Bethany, you asked about the popularity of essences. I mean, I haven't fucked with a lot of them yet, but I don't know. I'm weird about like just using weird stuff. Okay, wait, let me go back here. Yolanda, what did you ask? Because I literally cannot find it. I don't know. Hi, V. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Detox smells like oranges. Yes, Feffy, you do have to pay attention to what the product says. And, and that's one of the things that I had to learn about skincare for myself. And I learned that fairly young, that any notes on texture, my pores are no longer telling everyone what I really think, but the texture remains. So here's the thing. One, you're going to have pores. Everyone has pores. If you ever go to my Instas, I am not going to post po photos of myself, smooth the fuck out to where I look, you know, as smooth as this brush here. Like I'm not trying to do that. That's ridiculous. People need to see what happens to your skin. You're not going to get rid of pores. You're not going to get rid of texture. You're going to have these things. You can help smooth it by having like nicer, you know, doing the things that your skin wants, doing the things that are good for your skin. Like I've smoothed a lot of my, lot of my texture by simply moving to a one, a, a simpler skincare routine, but two, by combating all the different things that happen on a daily basis. So then that way it looks nicer. Also, I got the PMD vibrate face vibrator and it's done something to my skin. I don't know how to tell you, but um, sunscreen, moisturize regularly. I also use um, this, the body shop. It's a skin clearing um, facial wash in the morning. I also would definitely say that if, if you are using an exfoliant, that will help to lessen the appearance of texture in your pores. Always remember that your pores cannot get smaller. They can only look, the appearance can be less. <laughs> they don't get smaller. So I think that that's so crazy that people will constantly, like, oh, and it makes your pores smaller. It doesn't, it doesn't. Like nothing, your pores are the size that your pores are, that they are. That, that's gonna be the size of your pores. They're not gonna get smaller. <laughs> Hi, Vision of You. Hi, I went on, I went to an consult. I have combo skin. She should see, she suggested a vene. My skin was immediately balanced. It may be worth to get a consult instead of trial and error. Yes. So that is a big thing, guys. If, if all, all else, if you have gone and you look at the ingredients and you're trying stuff where you think, okay, well, I have combination skin, I'm going to use this and it's still not working. If you have the money, get a consult, have somebody look at your skin, especially for combination skin guys. With combination skin, and not even combination skin, let me just back up. As a woman, your skin changes every day, every day. Your hormone balance changes, what you're exposed to changes. If you get like more carnally excited than usual, your skin can change. If you get some carnal action, you know, if you're happy, that changes your skin. All of these different hormones in your body change how you look. What you eat changes your skin. If you do or do not have dairy, if you remove meat, if you add meat, how many vegetables, all of this stuff. Yes, tea tree, Kimberly. All of these things impact how your skin looks. And it's not just your face skin, like your body skin changes. So like my skin, for instance, um, I use a lot of body butters, number one, but number two, I can tell the difference when I've been eating a lot of tuna, for instance, if I've been eating a lot of tuna and I have all these omega threes, like just rolling through my skin, like all of my skin starts getting extra glorious. It's just like, Hey boo, but I'm also a little bit oilier. <laughs> I'm on my period. And I noticed because a member of the military landed on my face. <laughs> okay. Feffy, I just want you to know that had you not put a major pimple there, I would have been like, I thought you were a virgin. No. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like your period can positively and negatively impact your skin. I think everybody always thinks about negative impacts of being on your period, but sometimes it can be positive. I've had some where like my skin just started glowing to the heavens and I was like, I don't know what the fuck happened. Hey, Britt. <laughs> 
Yes, Beth Bethany, cold water fish are like magic for the entire body. So I just wanted to pop on here right quick, guys, and just be able to show you like, and I can rinse this off and come back if you want. You can talk amongst yourselves. It's completely up to you. I don't want to keep you guys, but I just want to do like a quick, hey, 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 skin care, or I can do the rest of it. Y'all let me know. <laughs> Y'all talk to Brit. I'm going to go rinse my face and put all the rest of the shit on it, okay? Okay, I'll be right back. Three minutes, seconds. All right, so sorry. All right. Oh, thank you, Britt. I know. I like. I'm. I, it's so hard to show up in people's. I like. I'm. I, it's so hard to show up in people's lives now. Audra in the shower, right? <laughs> and then just real quick, I don't know if you guys can see this, but um, see how I'm patting patting my face dry please pat your faces dry please stop doing please stop doing that please your skin doesn't need your skin doesn't need that so if you see my face now it's all like bright and like hey bitch today i'm not going to use my face vibrator because i just wanted you to see how i actually apply the glow recipe so today i'm actually not even going to do an eye cream we're just going to like we're just going to chill he, it's way past his bedtime. Feffy Bo is, it's, it's, it is his bedtime. Also, he got in trouble. So. <laughs> so then when you're using this, also when you drop it, like don't please, for the love of all that's holy, put the dropper directly on your face. Like let it be near, but not on. And then I always put a little extra on my chin because my chin always misses all the love. So I'm going to rub this one. This one, you can do a little bit more of the rub because of the consistency. But I'm very careful about how I get it on my face. It's a very light, gentle like maneuver of moving it around because of this consistency of this one. But do you see how it's like making my skin look bright already? And my skin just looks like all bright, all pretty. And I'm just kind of gently feathering the product on my face. I hold my own face. Yes, you're right. I do. But one of the reasons I do that, so this move here I did to teach myself to not get into that like rubbing sensation. So when I started holding my face with one hand, it kind of forced me to be like this. So There you go. So like now you can kind of see what it's doing. So now we're gonna wait another five minutes before I put moisturizer on. I'm going to let this sink into my skin. The best time for serums is really nighttime. In the daytime, you wanna be using kind of more skin, like things that are gonna make your skin look like glass, like the peach and lily um, glass serum. That's great for the daytime. I wouldn't, like I use, I don't really use that at night. I only use that in the daytime when I'm putting on makeup. Wait, let's go back. What's happening? Oh yeah, everybody stop Brick Clark, by the way, because she's the shiz. Um, I, so I still, poor Brit, she still gives me nervous goat farts. So, <laughs> so I never stalk her enough, but Brit is awesome. She's so fun, so funny. Just 
I don't know. She's one of those people that if you were in the room with would just definitely make you feel comfortable if you felt weird. And that's a high compliment coming from me because I like people who do that because I'm usually the person who feels weird. Um, <laughs> Beppy, oh, oh, thank you, Bridge. Did everyone like this video? Thanks, guys. Beppy, oh my God, when people use an exfoliating mask with a brush and then they rub their skin, girl. Like every time I see somebody get a towel and just be like, I'm like, oh my God, you just ruined everything. You're the wrinkles. You're supposed to be unwrinkling, not wrinkling. Feffy, I'm like painting the mask on so I get an even coating instead of thick, thin patches. Yeah, so that's actually why I switched to using a brush instead of my hands because one, this is, I'm not a fingers bitch. I'm not really going to be one all that often because there's oils on your fingers and I just don't like transferring them into the product and all over my face. And I just feel like it's hurting the whole process. That's me, but use your fingers if you want to. Um, <laughs> but I just don't like to. Um, I'm so partial to wanting to try everything glow recipe because of the whole fruit thing. Yes, actually like a lot of glow recipe is really good. The only thing I kind of like is just okay is I have this avocado retinol eye mask. That's like, all right. Oh, wow, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. The chat just like rolled back down. So I'm like, I don't know what happened. Hi, Toya, Toya made it, welcome. Oh, yeah, Brit, yes, you're just, you're like, listen, there are people in this world because everybody isn't meant to, like I am, once I get to know you, very, very bubbly and effervescent and I'm, like right there. But if I don't know you well, like I stand in the corner of the room, just like feeling uncomfortable. Like <sighs> Brett said, I need <laughs> Emily. Oh my God. You haven't said nervous goat farts on your channel in ages. I know. Right. <laughs> well, cause like I, once I get to know people really well, I'm like, ah, You know what? I have not, but see, here's the thing. So the thing about like, first of all, this glow recipe takes some getting used to. I did forget to mention that because Britt is talking about, um, did it get almost chunky the more you used it? You have to store these in a cool location. Anything that seems to have like fruit, keep it cool. The other thing is when you first use this, like the first time I use this, and I swear there's a video like eons ago from when I first got this, it kind of made me want to vomit because it smelled like pineapple. And I don't like the smell of pineapple juice. I don't like the smell of pineapple juice. I like pineapples. I hate the smell of the juice. It like makes my throat get cold. <laughs> my eyes are actually starting to water from thinking about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> my gag reflex got hit by thinking about it. Um, <laughs> But I did not, mine did not get chunky. Mine is fine. Yeah, so, because <laughs> here's the thing about TikTok, we have to remember, they have between 15 and 60 seconds to try to get across a point. So they're using a lot of sensational stuff. It's the same as Instagram. And it's it, like, also, I don't take makeup advice from someone who's 12. No offense. Like, I'm not going to take a skincare advice from someone who's 12, doesn't have a line on their face. Just eat a dick, kid. No, I'm just kidding. Don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> so, you, so, yeah, Emily, again, same, Audra. I'm so awkward if I don't know you. I am so glad you're here, Toya. <laughs> My skin, it's it's doing it's doing what it does. Currently, it is yellow. It used to be brown. Remember when we used to be brown, guys, when you were brown? Caucasian folks, remember when y'all used to have like pink in your skin? Now y'all turn it translucent. <laughs> like, does everybody remember when when our skin was like a, a lovely color? Like now legitimately our faces are starting to match our chests. And there's nothing like now I get foundation, it's too light for me. I'm like, no, it's not, not anymore. It's fine. I know. I just, I get so mad about that. I like, I get, I get such a, listen, here's the thing. No offense, but literally at my, if you are under the age of like 30 trying to talk to me about fine lines, I can't, I can't hear you. 
I'm so deaf to whatever it is you have to say. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? What? Uh, uh? Like maybe 27. 27, I'll listen to you a little bit. But if you're younger, I cannot hear you. I have become deaf. I can't, I'm, I'm, you're over there like, and for fine lines, I'm like, I'm sorry, what? I can't hear you. So deaf. I'm so, so deaf. <laughs> I sure you're the invisible. I know, like, we're all just like turning. <laughs> I just like turn into it. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the thing. Like, did you say um, the drunk elephant? So B, I'm going to tell you, I have started moving away from getting pure, like anything that's mostly vitamin C. I tend to find stuff that is a combination. Vitamin C works best in a combination for me. Because otherwise, like, my skin's on fire. And I'm like, I don't know what happened. Toya, I'm so glad. Thank you. You working in the hospital? Listen, Toya, if you want to know the truth about most of us is we're in our bathrooms getting ready, all right? We think and we look like a bad bitch. Then we get to work. We get in the work bathroom and we're like, why? Bethany had even mentioned that in another chat, like, why do I look like a clown? you just over there like, so this happened. <laughs> like, that's how I feel. I don't know how y'all feel, but that is how I feel every time it happens. I'm like, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Peppy, oh my God, yeah, when those kids are like, this is for fine lines and wrinkles, you're like, you're dead. What do you know? <laughs> I am, man. I'm always in the bathroom. I really am. I'm like, if I, like, one day when I figure out how to get like a camera set up in my bathroom to do my skincare routines, I'll be able to take you all there. Ew, Kimberly, really? It smells like hot dogs? <laughs> Dirty feet on your face. So what you're saying is why I don't love the ordinary. I'd rather have something blended mixed rather than like a pure ingredient. Yes. So here's the thing. I think that if you have, for me personally, I do not really like to hit my skin with the pureness of anything. And I, I think that it sounds good in theory. Like you're like, if a little bit of retinol is good, then if a little bit of vitamin A is good, then, but I think about it like this. When you're eating food or anything like that, I don't know if you've ever had to just start doing all my videos in the shower. I would get demonetized so fast. <laughs> <laughs> but like if you have ever taken iron on your own because you just thought <laughs> you just thought you were iron deficient one of two things has happened to you either you got the most hardcore shits you've ever had in your life or you got stopped up so bad that is one of the things that taught me that I don't have to just go and get like the purest form of something to help me out <laughs> Like I'm going too far. Like that's what I had to start doing. I'm going too far. I can find good combinations of things because this has vitamin C, but it also has other things in it. I rem I used to have like the little ingredient thing way back in the day. I don't now, but it has other stuff in it that isn't just vitamin C. Although the vitamin C is a little, just a little bit on you. <laughs> at home. Hell yeah, I look awesome at work. Damn, is this McDonald's? Because I look like Ronald. <laughs> yes. So here's what kills me. I do not understand people who are like cr mixing skincare in their home. Like I don't get it. Okay. And I, no shade, no tea, no shade to anybody, but I don't get it. And here's why I don't get it. Like they're literally people. Good night, Britt. Thank you so much for coming. I'm going to link her channel when this all oh, it might be in the morning, but I'm going to link her channel below as well as Emily's so that you guys know who my friend base is and come on in and say hello to them too. So if you're not, if you're not in their channels, if you're not subscribed, I highly suggest that you do. Emily is like super fucking knowledgeable about makeup, like her whole eyeshadow. She knew everything. Like, I don't know how she, she and she's so eloquent in the way so that she speaks. Like, I feel like a dumbass every time. Cause she's like the opacity of da -da -da. I'm like, it's pretty. That's me. I'm like, it's pretty. It's bright. <laughs> Good night, Brent. Sleep well.
but yeah, I just, I, I feel like we, we have science and scientists and people who have gone to school to learn how to put all this shit. Yes. Eloquent with a lot of fucks thrown in, which is my best kind of eloquence. <laughs> That is correct. That's why we're one of the reasons why we're friends, Emily. Um, and this is, and that, you know what? You're going to just slide me into this. That pure ingredients freak me out. Same with all natural, no chemicals type shit. Like, what do you mean no chemicals? You are a chemical, Brenda. Thank you. Chemical doesn't mean bad. Okay. It really doesn't. Who Lord, I'm seeing how yellow my ass is right now. It's really hurting my feelings. Moving on. But chemical doesn't mean bad. All natural doesn't mean good, okay? There's a lot of things that are natural, like poison ivy is natural. Doesn't mean it's good. Like we're not all rolling around in poison ivy and like, well, it's natural, so it's okay. Like that's not what it means. So ugh. we have to stop getting into these like immediate rushes to hearing something about a skincare ingredient or product and thinking that, because like, for instance, hearing that something's from China, that doesn't mean it's bad. We have we have to stop immediately rushing to like, Ugh, just like with the hyaluronic acid, it, it is in and itself, I don't think that it's bad. It's my personal opinion. Oop, my eyelash is doing a thing. It's my personal opinion. I just know that we shouldn't, you shouldn't layer so many of them. I mean, the whole point of it is it, it's, it's sucking, it's sucking moisture like from everywhere and pulling it into your skin. So no, you don't want to have a hyaluronic acid uh, cleanser, toner, and moisturizer. That's a lot of moisture. <laughs> hey, Teresa. <laughs> it's like you are a chemical, Brenda is a mood. Technically, Tracy, I do not know. She's like, how do people who mix up their own skincare at home know how much of what to put in there? I bet for every Madam C.J. Walker, there are 174 women who really fucked up their hair. Yes. And that's the thing. I'm not trying to do that. I am not trying to play with my fat. So if you buy a new mask, this is what, like when I, for the most part, cause I used to have combination skin that was mostly sensitive. When I got a new mask, what I would do is just put like a whole, like a, put a circle in one spot. And they always say like a nickel, I would make it a little bit bigger because I just felt like her, because I just felt like a nickel was not enough space for me to quick find out because like, I have weird, I have some patches on my skin. And since I have those patches, I was like, mm, I'm not particularly interested. You have some patches on your skin. You just have some different sensitivities. I have different sensitivities in different spots. So like I may have some different sensitivities right here around my eyes that aren't around my mouth. So I would put this here and then be like, okay, and see, and put like a, eh, about that size, more of like a quarter and see how it reacts. And then if it goes well, then you continue with it. If it doesn't go well or it just goes okay, like take it off your face or realize kind of what you need to do. Or if you even start to experience a burn within five minutes, but it's a 10 minute mask, then know that it's three minutes for you. So be a very thin layer, let it sit for three minutes by five rinse. You know what I mean? It's like things that you need to learn that if it's a good product for you and you like it, but time-wise you can't make it, you just have to learn to move and shake with what's good for you. Poop is, <laughs> yes. George Carlin, uh, may he rest in peace because seriously, one of my favorite comedians of all time, all time. It's just, it's so annoying that people do that. Someone roasted your skincare for being from very simple brands and too chemically. And I was like, my face was red and cracked and painful. This routine restored it, shut up. Yeah, and that's the thing. What works for one person may not work for another. There's no need to be dicks. Like, <laughs> I don't have a nicer way of putting it. I'm looking for my eye drop, sorry guys. I don't have a nicer way of putting it. There's no need to be a dick. There's literally zero reason to be an asshole about other people's skincare. Cause like, I don't know if y'all saw it on Twitter, if you're on Twitter, but someone was, and this is sad, but someone was trying to play, this is how I took it. Someone was trying to pay Robert Welsh a compliment by explaining like that Robert Welsh wouldn't feel this or that about something. I don't agree with how they went about it. I'm with Robert on that. That was really shitty. He does not want to be used, nor would I want to be used to tear another person down. Um, but 
it's just very upsetting that people get like that, right? You people just get like really shitty and they think that they're being so smart and it's like, oh, well, you're doing it this way. And even with telling people like, oh, well, you need to move this product up on your face or you need to do this. You need to spread the product, whatever's easiest for you. Not everybody wants to do this maneuver and all of this. Like everybody doesn't want to do that. Maybe that's not going to work for them. Maybe, you know, padding like this isn't for them. Maybe they like to just get it on their hands and do like this. Everybody has a way that works for them. And as long as their skin looks good and they're happy with their skin, let them fucking have it. Okay, so here's something I thought was dumb. Every time we were having an election, they asked the candidates about their grooming. Elizabeth Warren says she uses old school ponds cold cream. Wow. It is dumb stuff that they ask them. But also when they when it comes to women, they like I don't they spend way too much time about how women look and as opposed to like what they have to say. Where is my lip balm, y'all? Lip balm, one second. <laughs> don't use this one. I hate this one, but it was closest. <laughs> I don't care what these people do to groom. And these politicians, like, they don't know. Somebody's doing it. Like, they have no idea. Don't use this. It's horrific. I hate it so much, but it's closest. I got it in a scent bird when I had that shit, but I don't like it. It's because it's like greasy. And I just don't like that it's greasy. But it's like greasy, not good way. And it's like, it's rose. I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, so I remember even, because I'm an old bitch, I remember way back to Sarah Palin days where they spent all of this time talking about how hot she was, very little talking about like what she usually do. And I was like, okay. So basically, could could any of us who do makeup, could any of us just show up and be politicians because we're attractive? Like, hi, I'm Audra, and I plan to, you know, do whatever the fuck you want. I'm cute. Like, <laughs> now we're going to quickly cleanse my hands because I'm going to put the Giaja on my face. And I've been touching things, so... I hate the smell of rose. I really do. There's like literally one product I have. It's an Elemis, Elemis, it's an Elemis um, face oil. And that's about the only thing. And that is because it is Audra for president. Oh no. I'd be like, vote for me. I'm adorable and I'm good skin. <laughs> that's all you need to know about me. <laughs> like, what are you going to do to solve the country's financial crisis we're all gonna get better skin <laughs> the that is the problem with rose is it the initial whiff is rose and then after that you're like it's too it's it's a weird smell okay so my hands have been cleansed now i'm going in with this yaja i always leave the little silver top on because like I don't know. I'm a weirdo. Now I have a little bit, like a, quite a bit on my finger, but the way that I go about doing this, if I have too much, I don't worry about it. I just kind of put a little here. Cause I'd rather have a little bit extra out of the pot for me. Cause it's, one is this isn't super expensive, but I'd rather have a little bit extra out of the pot than not enough and have to dip my finger back in after I've already touched my face. So And I'm going to get the delicate skin around my eyes here in just a second. I do not use a lip, excuse me. I don't actually use an eye cream every single night. Um, I don't see the point. Like an eye cream is an eye cream is an eye cream. Most of them are the same. There, There's one by Dr. Brandt that's actually really, really nice. But I'm not going to get like, I'm, I'm not going to lose any sleep over not using an eye cream. I find that most of the time if... One, dark circles are hereditary. And two, if they're a little deeper than usual, I find that just some simple things like drinking some water will help. And I'm the one saying that and everybody knows I hate water. So 
So now it's pinky time. And like, this is where I just dab and like let it sink in overnight. I, like, that's why I don't worry about eye cream. Cause I'm just gonna actually dab this around my eye here. And I'm just gonna let it sink. I'm not gonna rub it in. I'm just gonna dab it. That's the other thing about eye creams in general is a lot of people are rubbing them even when they're supposed to dab them. They dab and then they try to rub it in so that it stays. And it's like, girl, don't do that. <laughs> and then I do have a little extra. I just use it for my hands since I just, cause I just cleanse them. So I ain't mad at it. I just wash my hands so they were dry. Now they're not dry. And now my face, good to go for the night. Like I'll be able to go to bed. I'm looking dewy. <laughs> <laughs> Yolanda said, I didn't wear makeup when I was younger because I was poor. And then when I became less poor, it was the fragrance. Yeah. And I'm actually really glad that there's a lot more makeup, not, and just skincare, makeup products in general that don't have fragrance. Um, but some things say that they don't have fragrance and then people get mad because it does have fragrance but the fragrance isn't added. So like, I don't know how, where to stand on that because it's like, they didn't add any, any, any fragrance, but it does have a smell. And I technically, Tracy, my aunt was an Avon lady at some point. I feel you. What happened with the Avon ladies? <laughs> I think I enjoy being subversive and liking what everybody likes, like Dave Matthews Band and Rosé. Listen, there's nothing wrong with Dave Matthews Band, okay? I will fight you if you know. Ooh. through the window and I stare. <laughs> Tied up and twisted the way I like to be. For me, for you, crash into me. That's my weird little Dave Matthews. Like, I used to do that a lot. I don't know what was wrong with me. But sometimes when I sing a song, I sing it in the same, like, voice that they <laughs> sing it in. And... <laughs> So ridiculous. He had a yeast infection as y'all. Did you know that? Like way back in the day, moving on. <laughs> we have like three more minutes and then I'm going to sign off because I'm supposed to have a video up tomorrow and I have to finish editing it y'all. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the thing Toya. I know that there's pushback with fragrance and makeup and skincare, but I absolutely hate not having a pleasant fragrance. Here's a fun thing. So far, what I found about fragrance in my research of it is that like, it's not necessarily bad. Like some added fragrance, like there's a mixed review. Some added fragrance is bad, but like not all fragrance is created equal. <laughs> Hang out and do my uh, Dave Matthews impression. <laughs> I loved Dave Matthews, I'm sorry. Yolanda, I love, I can never say squalene and it smells like feet. I like the smell of skunk. Sorry, I don't care. Like, I really don't care. Like, I've opened up my patio door and be like, skunk. <laughs> Hopefully they, you know, sprayed and they didn't get run over. So that is my hope. <laughs> if it's way down in the ingredient list, I don't mind it. So my main thing is to like, you have to look at the ingredients like, or like what it says. Like for instance, I have this Hello Fab. It automatically says that it's a coconut skin smooth. So I'm already expecting it to smell like coconut. They put the word coconut in it. What kind of idiot am I to be like, it smells like, of course it smells. It says coconut. Because like, I'm going to expect that it's going to smell like coconut because it has coconuts in it, which um, Hello Fab is like, fab, like, well, it's First Aid Beauty, but First Aid Beauty is one of my favorite skincares. Like, I love them. I like all the stuff they have. They have makeup, but it's like not for dark skins. So, but I guess apparently right now I'm not dark skinned. So. <laughs> Yeah, I've been trying to understand the Hiram Anti 
fragrance camp on a deeper level. Yeah, it's weird because like I, I've, I've been doing my research on fragrance and I promise you, I just keep getting a lot of mixed reviews. It's, it's the same with like sheet masks. There's mixed reviews on whether or not they are good for your skin or aren't good for your skin, whether or not they're doing anything. Like a lot of like, here's my concern. My concern is with what they're doing to not make it smell. Is that weird? Like I start getting slightly concerned of what they're doing to strip the smell so that it isn't, so that it is fragrance free. I get a little concerned about that. I'm a, I'm the weirdo who thinks about stuff like that because it's it's the same way that I think about like when people are like, oh yeah, let's all use you know metal straws. I'm like, okay, let's use metal straws. But you do realize they might build a whole other factory, which means they might raise the ground and build like do all this stuff. So maybe we're not doing what we thought we were doing. So. A good point. So first we have Kimberly saying, I love some perfume, but not my skincare. There's a big difference in smelling ingredients and adding fragrance. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Skunks don't smell that bad, man. You got to smell a barn full of chickens and get back to me. <laughs> no, I'm good, Teresa. You live that life. Um, one of your favorite SPFs, the Clarence one, too expensive in terms of price browns, but great. It's super fragrance, but I love it. Well, see, and that's the thing. Sunscreen, to me, sometimes it does have, like, for me, like, I don't like it to smell funky. I don't like that sunscreen smell, Feffy, so you're fine. Technically, Tracy said sheet masks, whether good for skin or not. I don't like single-use products. I don't either, and I don't know how to stop getting all these friggin' masks. So that's another reason I stopped doing beauty boxes is because they always, like, when all else fails, put in a sheet mask. <laughs> So we've got creepy stalker things happening. No, I'm just kidding. There's nothing creepy. It's all love. <laughs> and for those of you who watch this on the replay, always try to make sure that you watch the live chat while you watch it because it's more fun. Yeah, Emily, to a degree, sheet masks are serums on a sheet. So you may as well just get serum. Like that's, that's, that's honestly how I feel about a lot of sheet masks is it's not that it's not good. And the thing is a sheet mask has its place. Like if it's a really hot day, stick one in the fridge or freezer for about five minutes, pull it off, put it on your face and just like relax and like have a drink through a straw, a metal straw. I'm, I, you know, I'm in Texas. They're still giving us straws. Sorry. <laughs> And he said, and also a cold, clammy face mask. Nope. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, it's just really weird. I have another mask that I've recently just been trying. So um, I tried to add that into my routine. I don't know how I feel about it. It's just like, a, it's a weird mask. So I'm going to try to mess with it some other day. I want to DM everyone here. And then I'm like, that is some weirdo stocko behavior. Girl, don't. <laughs> it's really not. Like, I know you guys. I love you guys. Um, I... I haven't you sent me a message before and I don't care. Like it's not, listen, if you're going to, if you actually creep me out, I will tell you you're creeping me out because I'm a Taurus. All right, guys, I'm going to go because I have to finish editing my video. That's supposed to go up tomorrow AM. And I was really only supposed to be here for like 20 minutes and now it's been an hour. So I love you guys so much. I will be popping up again tomorrow to show you like maybe the one or two things that changed in my skincare routine for day two. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And until next time, deuces. I love you guys. Have a good night. <laughs>